Hey, Scoot, you ready to go see Jaws 19? Yeah, should we go? Uh, what, can we take your car? Mine's still getting hover converted. Uh, yeah, sure. One of my favourite movies from the 80s, definitely, is Back to the Future. Well, in the 80s, there were two great comedy, sci-fi, uh, fantasy movie series. First one was Ghostbusters, the second one was Back to the Future. Yeah. And I love both of them <laughs> intensely. Back to the Future was so much fun. You had Michael J. Fox at just the right time. Yeah. You had Christopher Lloyd in a career-defining role. <laughs> um, and just a great, fun, fish-out-of-water comedy. Yeah. It's everything that you associate with a good 80s movie. You're right. It really summed up the 1980s, and it also caught that nostalgia of the 1950s. Mm. And it worked so well having Marty travel back in time to visit his parents at his own age and get involved in their lives and and end up almost ruining his own life because of it. It's amazing. And when you think of this as a time travel movie, Bob Gale does such a great idea coming up with that story Mm. and putting it in such a way that... You know, it felt realistic in terms of it's a machine and they've redefined the DeLorean. The DeLorean will forever be the Back to the Future time machine. If you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? It's funny. Mm. It's lighthearted. The chemistry between the characters is so, so good. You take a look at the small amount of footage we've seen of Eric Stoltz playing Marty McFly mm. and it's a completely different movie to Michael J. Fox. It needed that yeah. Michael J. Fox touch in there which was so perfect at that time and the guy was running himself ragged making this movie and still doing family ties yeah shooting it in the evenings and nights wasn't he and it's crazy yeah but thank goodness he did because he gave us this wonderful character marty you made it yeah the whole film is packed full of wonder really and and science it's sort of science that's not real but it, it feels very real the technology feels like it could almost exist you know, it's limitless what, where you could go and what you could do if you had this time machine. It seems really exciting. And at the same time, the messages of not messing with your past, but at the same time, you actually control your own destiny, not trapped by mm. um, what's happened previously, you know, it has a wonderful thematic resonance. You can watch it many, many times and find new things in it, and that's really cool. I like that. They put all those little hidden little Easter eggs in there mm. and a lot of nods back to... Um, just nostalgic things that um, Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis remember from their own childhoods growing up. Mm. When it came out, I mean, just what a huge hit it was, and it really captured people's imaginations. Back to the Future was a huge hit, and then a few years later they came back with part two and three, which was shot back to back. And they were really wondering how to follow it up, what direction to take it, you know, because they told such a perfect little story in the first one, and they, they must have been thinking how how do we do this? And the, and the only way to do it is obviously take the end of your first movie yeah. and can continue that and so go into the future, into 2015. Exactly. Well, I think they did this wonderful job of showing us a possible future, mm. which some of it hasn't quite turned out the way we wanted. Yeah. We're still about, what, 15 <laughs> parts behind in the Jaws well, series? see, they always described it as it's a future of the current time that they left. So it's a projected future of 1985. Mm. It's not the real future. So that's kind of the little catch there. I don't know if that's really true or not, but but a lot of the the things did actually come true, didn't they? Big flat screen TVs. Um, Hoverboards are kind of a thing now, kind of. Yeah, we haven't really seen it. 3D is back in in a big way, so that might be the right one. Yeah, true. Um, That's probably about it. Yeah. Shark still looks fake. But I think the most fun part of part two was when they went back into the time frame of part one. Mm. And you had this wonderful cross-pollination of them interacting with themselves or just missing themselves. Having to avoid themselves. Yeah, Yeah, which was the most fun and cool way of seeing time travel done. And getting to see another part of the scene from a different angle, from behind the stage or from... You know, different part of the school when Marty was in one area, yeah. he was also in another area. So, I really enjoy part two, probably mm. the best out of all three of them, just for that sheer cleverness of the time travel being so interwoven into it. Yeah. Plus, a flying DeLorean is really pretty cool. What the hell is going on here? Ah! Ah! Fly! Now, for part three, though, they did take a big gamble by making it a western, basically. Western movies were sort of making a little bit of a comeback around that time. They were trying to... I mean, there were a few wider and Tombstone and yeah. other ones like that. Back to the Future Part 3 did a really good job in terms of taking an already successful franchise and sort of grafting in 
Western elements to give them a chance to make a Western, which the filmmakers clearly wanted to do yeah. and had a great time doing it. Yeah. Um, and it, I don't know, made it more palatable to the, the regular audience yeah. to watch it that way. And it, it certainly was great to take Marty completely out of the 80s, which he was completely home in, the mm. 50s, which he'd kind of got the gist of how to deal with it. Yeah. And now, boom, he's back in the <laughs> 1880s. Totally out like, of his element again. Exactly. Yeah. And again, like the second movie, they kind of went for gags, mm. really. It was all of gag-based comedy. It was sort of taking the mickey out of out of the time period itself, you know, yeah. um, frisbee and shooting uh, shooting guns and, yeah. and all sorts of stuff like that. So that was really cool. And, and they got to give Doc a love interest as well, which a lot of people don't really like, I think, but... I think it's really good to see Doc have more of a chance to shine. It was, in the first movie, it was great. It was really Marty's movie. Yeah. And he, Doc was a supporting character. He didn't character. really go through any arcs yeah. in the first or even second movie. In, in the second movie, it really became a bit more on par in terms of their partners working together. Hmm. In part three, Doc now really had his own story in terms of discovering a woman that he was in love with which was something which clearly in his life had never been yeah. something he'd really focused on and I thought it was really nice the ending was a little bit weird with the whole time travelling train and <laughs> he just that. broke all his own rules didn't he? pretty much but that but, was dark he always yeah. kind of did that he always said one thing even right yeah. back in the first movie he always said one thing and then he ended up doing the other thing like yeah. don't read the letter and yeah. then he ended up reading the letter so you know that's dark your future hasn't been written yet no one's has your future is whatever you make it, so make it a good one. The Back to the Future trilogy, it is one of the great movie trilogies of all time. Yeah. The theme is fantastic. The songs. The songs are fantastic. <laughs> yep. Even the songs in part three are still pretty fun. Yeah. The top. <laughs> um, you know, it is a great culturally impactful series of movies, mm -hmm. which is just fun to watch. Yeah. Anyway, subscribe to our videos. Give us a thumbs up. We'll see you next time. Time? Uh-huh. 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 U